Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Baseball Hattie. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. It is one afternoon in early spring. The baseball season is just underway, and I am sitting behind third base at the polo grounds, waiting for the Giants to carve up a few Brooklyns, when I feel somebody sit down next to me. I look over, and who is it but Armand Stacy? I do not like this citizen. But he pays his way in, so there's nothing I can do about it. Then he speaks to me. Great day for a ball game, huh, Broadway? Yeah, for a ball game. 30,000 people here, and you sit down next to me. (laughs) Don't like me, do you? You are not my idea of a boon companion. Now or ever. Eh, Lots of people don't like me. Why should you be there? So long, Armand. Sure, so long. Broadway, I gotta get out of here. My sentiments, exactly. You are a mind reader. Uh, it can't be her, not after all these years. Who are you talking about? You look like you see a ghost. Yeah, ghost. Broadway, I, I see her on. If I see you first, you will have to hunt. Hey, let me throw him. With that, Armand takes the wind like a million gendarmes are after him. I look around to see what makes him decide not to stay. And I see her. At first, I do not believe her. But there she is, baseball Hattie, sitting at her old place behind the giant's dugout. Now, why Armand blows at the sight of her is quite a story, which I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Baseball Hattie. Like I say, I spot baseball Hattie sitting behind the Giants' dugout. And it takes me back maybe 20 years before, when the Giants are playing in Philadelphia. It seems the umpire calls a close one against the Phillies, and the citizens there resent it more than someone. In fact, the group of them are waiting for the Giants to come from the clubhouse. There they come! Yeah, Giants! Let's make them sorry they ever come to Philly! Come on, you guys! Hey, let me out of here! Let me out of here! Hey, that's... Hey, Stack Douglas, come on, boys. Let's put him back in the bushes. Somebody gonna get hurt. Come on. Okay, come on, all of you. Come on. I'm with you, Hey, Stack. Grab stuff and solid and swing away. You better get out of here. This ain't no place for a lady. Who says I'm a lady? Oh, you got him right over the head. Come on, back. Back way to the tunnel leading up to the street. I'll hold him off. Well, I ain't gonna leave you here with him. Look, the cops will be here soon. Come on, you yellow boobs. Come on. Cops. Back to that tunnel, Hey, Stack. Come on, get going. Yeah, come on. We can make it now. That is how Baseball Hattie meets Haystack Douglas. They get away from the fight, and later they are sitting together in a little sandwich place. She is looking at him and says, You didn't get hurt, did you? Me? No. You? No. You sure pitched into those birds. Yeah. What's your name? Hattie. Everybody calls me Baseball Hattie. Oh, sure, Baseball Hattie. Ain't you always behind the dugout when we play home games? Uh Uh-huh. When I can make it, I go out of town, follow the Giants. You like baseball, huh? Nothing like it. Ever since my old... My father took me to my first game when I was a kid, I've been following the Giants. Ever seen me pitch? I ain't never missed a game you're in. Pretty good, huh? You're the best left-hander I've seen since... Well, since... Since? Maybe I'm the best lefty you ever seen, huh? You've got a curve like the letter Q. And that fast ball. <laughs> when you can't see him, you can't hit him. Yeah. Why'd they call you Haystack? Mm, maybe because I once pitched hay back in Missouri. That where you come from? Sure. Don't you never read the sports pages? Yeah. Well, then you ought to know. I just want to hear you say it. Why? I don't know. Just do. You can get me talking about myself, and I'll never stop. Okay, by me. Where are you from? New York. What do you do? I... Let's talk about you, huh? Sure. You see me throw a one-hitter last oh, week? Oh, sure. The Cards didn't have a chance. I figure maybe I win 25 games this season, then the World Series... Oh, you can do it, Haystack. Sure, I can. Stand on one leg. <laughs> oh, you're laughing. 
Oh, it's something somebody said the other day. What was it? Somebody said if I didn't quit horsing around and living like I do, I'd burn myself out in a year. <laughs> Me, I won't never burn out. Not as long as I got this left arm. Yeah. I I heard you were kind of hard to handle. Well, I got a right to a little fun. I get out there and pitch my heart out. Comes night, I gotta have a little fun. Ain't you ever worried about losing the game after having a little fun? Me? <laughs> No, nah, this old arm's like a rubber whip, you know. What's the matter? Why'd you stop talking? I just noticed something, Hattie. Like what? Like you're a real good-looking doll. Yeah, a real good-looking doll. <laughs> Hattie and Haystack make a pair from then on. And Haystacks keeps burning up the lead. Wins 14 in a row, including a no-hitter and two four-hitters. Then he hits a slump. And one night, Hattie gets a corner where she lives. I guess you don't know me, do you, Hattie? Well, maybe I do. I've seen your face someplace. Maybe in the newspaper. Yeah, that could be. My name's Benson. Oh, sure, sure. Red Benson, scout for the Giants. <laughs> you looking for a good second baseman here? Nope. Just a good baseball fan. That's me, Red. Never miss a game. I wish you would. Huh? What's on your mind, mister? Haystack Dugler. What about him? You know, knocked out of the box three times in a row in the last two weeks. So what? Every pitcher hits a streak like that. The best of them. Christy Matthewson, Marquard, Johnson, Bender. But they all came back strong. So will Haystack. Now look, you want me to put it on the line straight? Might be a good idea, Red. Pitch away. I picked Haystack out of the bushes. I found him pitching for peanuts back in Missouri. I talked the Giants into getting him. I know all that. So you get credit for digging up a world beater. You want some kind of a medal for doing your job? No. I want Haystack to be the great pitcher he can be. There ain't nothing wrong with him. Nothing that you couldn't cure. Meaning? Meaning what? Stay away from him. You're kidding. I'm not. Mr. Benson, let me get this straight. You want me to stay away from Haystack? That's it. For his sake, for the sake of the Giants. Well, either one's a good enough reason, but why pick on me? Why don't you take a guess? Look, that port-sided apple tosser was a wild onion before I met him. I didn't add nothing. Besides, all left-handers are screwballs. Granted. And what are you giving me? A chance. For what? For making something out of it. Look, why don't you get back in the woodwork? Now, look, Hattie. I figure Haystack's got a chance to straighten out before it's too late. We can keep him away from the high spots, level him off. Then do it. I ain't stopping you. But you are. Look, I told you he was a runaway horse before I met him. Hattie, you like baseball. What's that got to do with this? Everything. A few million kids get their kicks from the game. The big boys on the diamond are heroes. What do you say we keep it that so way? So who's taking candy away from the little... Well, am I? Hattie... Answer me a question. One question, and then I'll shut up. Cheap at half the price. What's the question? What kind of a reputation have you got? I'm supposed to be Snow White? That's none of my business, but it is my business to protect the game. By throwing a few mistakes I made back in my face. The fans are catching on. They're talking. Oh, sure, sure they are. When Haystack was winning, he could have been friendly with Cleopatra, Helena Troy, and a few other dolls. But as soon as the rest of the league touched him up, I'm a bad influence, is that it? Something like that. Okay, it. okay. Now take your frame out of here. Don't brighten up my place, honey. Go on, get. You love the guy, Hattie? Yeah. I guess that's it. Well, I got a job to do. I got the game and the Giants to think about. So? So, Haystack goes on suspension. What? Believe me, Hattie, this isn't personal between you and me. From where I stood, it was. No. You love the game, I love it. It's been my life. Either you cut loose from Haystack, or he goes on suspension indefinitely. Think it over, Hattie. Think it over. So from what I hear, Hattie does cut loose and sees no more a Haystack for some time. And it seems that this does him some good because he starts burning up the league again. 
Then suddenly, no one sees him for two weeks. The Giants are slipping down in the standings like a red-hot poker going through thin ice. It is near the end of the season. With Haystack, the Giants might have been up. But without him, they are sunk. Then one night, Hattie's at her place when she hears something at the door. Who's there? Who's there? Beat it before I call the cops. Go on, beat it. Hattie, you better open up or I'll bust in a whole wall. Haystack. Haystack. Oh, you big... What's the idea of locking me out, huh? What's the idea? Come on, get in here before somebody sees you. Everybody sees me. Greatest left hand in our game. Greatest. Come on, sit down here. Come on, sit down. Who's up next? What's his weakness? Fastball? I got it. Curve? I got it. Hi, Daddy. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Oh, tore my uniform. Well, well, tore my uniform. Gonna get fined. Sit still. Gotta have some fun. Pitch my heart out in the daytime. Gotta have some fun at night. You big rube. You busted yourself right out of the league. You knocked yourself right out of the box. Me? Me? <laughs> Greatest left hander in the game. Got a pitch. Right now. Stay sitting. Leave me alone, will you? Got a pitch. You, you, you. Daddy. I'll pitch. Hey. I signed up because I thought it would do you, you some me. good. You're hurting my face. Yeah, I don't want to hurt you, Pitch. Don't do it, Hattie, please. No, well, what do you want to go and do that for, <laughs> Hattie? What you crying for? Huh? For me? Shut up. I love you, Hattie. I want to marry you. You want to marry me? Oh, sure. I can't live without you. Look, you marry me, I'll straighten up. And be the greatest left hander in the game. Huh? You mean it? Sure. Sure, I mean it. Oh. He's dead. Oh. He's dead. Okay. Okay, I'll marry you. But please, Haystack, please don't pitch me any curbs. And they are married. All the baseball writers are wondering what the front office of the Giants will say. But the manager says Haystack cannot possibly be any worse married than he is single or. Now, maybe that is right. But what happens later, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Baseball Hattie. Well, it comes on winter, and Haystack gets all through it without getting out of line once. In fact, he is so good that he gets a contract, and that spring he reports to the Giants training camp, still towing the old straight and narrow marker. Then it is one day at the training park when Red Benson walks over to Hattie, and the scene is as follows. Hello, Hattie. Huh? Oh, hello, Red. Looks pretty good, doesn't he? Yeah, pretty good. A lot of zip in that arm? Lots. Anything wrong, Hattie? Wrong? Uh-uh. All the zip in the arm looks pretty good. What could be wrong? Not with him. With you. Me? Uh, never anything wrong with me. I, uh, I noticed you don't sit with the other gals. What other gals? Well, the other wives of the players. So? Half of them don't know nothing about baseball. They ought to be married to bookkeepers or something. Don't let them throw you, Hattie. What do you mean? You know. Ah. They gave you the frost, huh? I don't have nothing to do with them. If it's vice versa, it's okie dokie with me. Yeah. You uh, did a great job on Haystack. I didn't do nothing. He cleared himself up. 
Patty, I've wanted to talk to you about something ever since you and Haystack came south. Go ahead. Remember that night back in New York when I came to see you? Yeah, I remember. Don't. Don't? Don't what? Don't remember it. I got a short memory, Red. As far as I'm concerned, there never was a night you came to see me. You're all right, Hattie. Whoa. What's the chinning all about? How's the arm, Haystack? Good. Why? Well, it's going to be a tough season. Every outfit in the league's got a good club. Cards, Reds, Pirates, Cubs. They'll all be up there gnawing away at the old flagpole. Ah, win 25, maybe 30. Just tell the guys with the sticks to get me some runs. One's all I need. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, I'll be seeing you. So long, Harry. See you later, Red. What do he want? Nothing. Just talking. Yeah? Well, I'm running in for a shower. I'll wait here. No, don't bother. Go back to the hotel. I don't mind. I'll see if the club's got any good stick boys. I said don't wait. Why not? Because I'm going out. Where? What's the difference? I'm going out to a party. Party? Where are we going? I'm going. Uh, Haystack, I get kind of lonesome back in that hotel. Buy a magazine. I don't want to stay home alone again. Go to a movie. By myself? What's the matter? You need somebody to explain the picture to you? Okay, Haystack. What time will you be back? Don't watch the clock, that's all. And that is the way it goes. More and more, Haystack begins to feel that he makes a bad deal when he marries Hattie. But Hattie says nothing and does her best to keep him in line. Then it comes up the middle of the season. The Giants are right up in there and depending more and more on Haystack's left soup bowl. But it seems that along about this time, Haystack discovers he likes to shoot craps and engage in various other pastimes that separate him from a good portion of scratch. So one night, he comes home late, and the scene is as follows. Haystack? Yeah, that's me. What time is it? Who cares? I guess nobody. Haystack, sit down, will you? Here on the bed. Why? I got something to tell you. It'll wait. I'm tired. You'll like this. Yeah? What makes you think I will? We're going to have a kid. That's big news? Did you get what I said? Yeah, I got it. What's my cue? Stand on my ear and do a twist? Haystack. Haystack. A kid, honey. A kid, a boy like you. It'll be a girl. You're the ones, all right, but a boy. A ball player like you. Did you ever think of that? No, nope. now stop yapping, will you? I'm tired. I'm pitching tomorrow. Big-headed fool. You swelled up a balloon. What do you think you are? What's eating on you? Nothing. Just nothing. Get out of here. Get out. Go on back to sleep. You. You. Don't do that again, Hattie. Don't never do that again. Why'd I ever marry? Why? You want me to answer that? Get out. Okay. I'll answer it. And then go. You married me because I was on the upgrade. Great chance for you to tie in with somebody who'd pull you out of the mud. Hey, sir. Yeah. And what was you when we married, huh? Maybe you'd like an answer to that, too. Or maybe you don't need no answer. You already got it. Okay. This washes us up. Where you going? Where you told me? Out. Get back in there, Haystack. Benson, what are you doing here? Keeping tabs on you. Now get back in there. Putting a tail on me, huh? Yeah. Hello, Hattie. Red. Oh, really? Hey, Stack, I trailed you tonight from one joint to another. Now I caught up with you. Beat it. Shut up and listen. Hattie. What? I heard what went on. I was standing outside. Oh, great. Just great. I'm glad I did. I'm going. You're staying. You're staying if I have to choke some sense into you. Red, let go. Let go. Now, you listen to me, you great big hero. You make one move to leave Hattie, and I'll give the whole story to every sports writer in the business. I'll see that they open up on you with every typewriter in the country. When they finish, you won't be able to get a job pitching beanbags in a carnival. Sure, sure. And kill the chance for the pennant. Yeah, even that. Baseball's my life. The Giants are my life. But so help me, Haystack. I swear to heaven I'll see us finish last before I let you walk out on Hattie. And Haystack does not walk out. 
he can do nothing but pitch. And underneath, he knows that once he has finished doing that, he is very much out in the cold indeed. Well, it comes up the end of August, and the Giants are fighting for the front end of the league. And an important series with Brooklyn is coming up. Everybody knows that Haystack is due to pitch at least two of the games, and he can generally beat the Dodgers of that year just by tossing his glove out on the mound. Then one evening, he comes home to Hattie with a guest. And the scene is as follows. Hattie! Hattie! Yeah? What do you want, Haystack? You know Armin Stacy. Yeah, I heard of him. How are you, Mrs. Douglas? Nice to see you again. Sure. Haystack, what's the idea of bringing home this two-bit gambler? <laughs> you don't like me, Mrs. Douglas. Don't pay no attention to her, Stacy. Oh, forgive her. What'd you want, Haystack? Me and Stacy's got some business to talk over. Why don't you go to a movie? I'm staying. It won't take long, Mrs. Douglas. Just as long as it takes to walk around the block. Haystack, what are you up to? Business, I told you. Now beat it. Either you beat it out or me and Stacy will go someplace else. And I might break training. Get it? I... All right. I'll go. <laughs> you know, you handle that very nicely, Haystack. Yeah. Now talk. Hey, Stack, you're on my books for five grand. I've carried you for six months. I know that, and you know it. It ain't news. I'm just reminding you. Now, you pitch tomorrow against Brooklyn. Yeah? The odds are two to one against the Dodgers, uh, if you pitch. If? I got no choice. I don't want you to have one. Sure, pitch, but uh, not so good. Blow the game? It'll cancel the five grand, and you get three more. When? A grand now and two more after the game. Oh. You stand to make a killing, huh? Uh, I'll get something out of it, yeah. Make it 4000 you got yourself a winner. <laughs> well, I'm not one to haggle. It's a deal. Now, uh, can you make it look good? Sure. A little less on a fastball. A curve don't break in right. I feed a wrong ball to a long hitter and I... What? This is Douglas. It was a short walk. I ain't never been away, Stacy. You... Uh, you heard that? Yeah. So? If Haystack doesn't blow the game, I'll squeeze for the five grand he owes me. If he plays my way, who knows the difference? Haystack, you ain't gonna do it. Why not? Haystack, I know you're a liar, a cheat, but nobody can tell me you'll drop down so low to toss off a ball game. Oh, you're gonna feed me that stuff about the great American game, yeah. huh? Hey, Stack, you ain't gonna do it. You ain't gonna do it because of our kid. Your son and my son who'll grow up to be a ball player. Ha! <laughs> the kid ain't even here yet. She's got him pitching no hitters. He'll have your name. If anybody finds out you toss a ball game, what chance will he have? Nobody finds it out. Now stop yapping. They always find out a dirty deal like this. Especially if you deal with a dog like Stacy. Oh, please, uh, Mrs. Douglas. You'll be the first one to holler copper if it's found out. Because he's a stool pigeon at heart. Hey, Stack. You ain't gonna do it. Hey, Stick. Where, where'd you get that gun? Hattie, you're going nuts. Put that away. I'm gonna fix it so he don't bribe you. No. Hey, Stick. Hey, Stick, I... Yeah, you can't prove a thing. Can't prove a thing on me. Hey, Stick. Honey. Hey, Stick. Did you... Did you have to make it? My left arm? Eddie? Well, there was a big holler about the thing, but it comes out in the newspapers that Hattie aims for Stacy and hits Haystack, and of course, Stacy brings no charges. When the doctors are through with Haystack, he will never pitch again. There is a big benefit game, and Haystack gets 25,000 fish. Then he and Hattie go to the Pacific Coast, and the last I hear, he passes away being a respectable grocer. And Hattie? <laughs> that is the payoff of the story, and one which I will tell you in a minute. That is the story so far. 
Then, like I say when I first begin, Armand Stacy does a quick fade when he sees Hattie. Now, I am more than somewhat curious. So I get to where Hattie is. Well, well, Broadway, how are you? Just fine, Hattie. And you? Good, good. A little older than when I saw you last. <laughs> you know, it is like old times seeing you here behind the giant's dugout. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, wasn't that Armand Stacy you was with just a minute ago? Hattie, I am not with him. Furthermore, I never am with him. He is always with somebody. I know what you mean. <laughs> He's seen me and he beat it. <laughs> yeah, I guess he figures you are still mad that you miss him that day and hit haste uh -huh. Hey, Broadway, did I ever tell you where I come from? Huh? No, you do not. My father ran a carnival when I was a kid. Seems to me this is a funny time to be giving me the story of your life. Uh-huh. But you said Armand was scared of me, thought I was still after him. You know, I minded the shooting gallery at the carnival when I was a kid. Got to be a pretty fair shot. Yeah, I guess that would be natural. In fact, it would be unnatural for you to miss anybody you aim at at close range. Yeah, it would. Now, ladies I... and gentlemen, the battery for today's game. Well, Hattie, I... I... for the Giants, catching Pinky Stanley, pitching Daryl Douglas. Daryl Doug, Hattie, is that? Yeah, a great left-hander. Just like his father. But Broadway... Huh? That's where the resemblance ends. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Baseball Hattie. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater, with John Brown as Broadway, is directed by Richard Sandville, and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. <laughs>